Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. Thanks so much for joining us today. We're just at two o'clock right now. I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes just to sign on and get settled in. We have a nice group joining us today. Excellent. So today's topic for the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project's Stay Healthy at Home webinar series is Still More to Come, NJ SAP and NJ SAN in 2021. So we are going to look into the new year um, as well as revisit some past events that the network and the project have hosted. We so appreciate your participation today. Just as a reminder, uh, we welcome feedback throughout the webinar. You can submit feedback, comments, questions in the questions box. So if you look at the go to webinar control panel and scroll down to the questions tab, you can hit that little triangle next to questions and it'll drop down a questions box. So I'll pose questions throughout the webinar, but again, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to submit them there. We will also present a post webinar survey it's super brief. We just want to know uh, if you were satisfied with today's discussion, as well as any topics that you would like to see us cover in the future. So we would really appreciate your participation in the post-webinar survey. So my name is Ashley Ritchie. I am the director of the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project. NG SAP, for short, has been a program of the Arc of New Jersey since 1983. My team and I support the statewide self-advocacy network, and that's really a big part of our discussion today. So we're going to break down the different activities and supports and services that are provided by the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project, as well as the structure and the mission of the New Jersey statewide self-advocacy network. We're also going to talk about ways to get involved in New Jersey's thriving self-advocacy movement, as well as revisit some past advocacy events that we've hosted and discuss our current virtual programming, as well as learn about some activities that are coming up for the new year. Okay, so we, the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project is myself, as well as Erin Smithers, our information and referral coordinator, and Frankie Bayak, our media and communications coordinator. So as a team, we provide services and supports to New Jersey self-advocates, as well as self-advocacy group advisors. Uh, we are a program of the ARC of New Jersey, and we support the largest self-advocacy organization in the state, which is the New Jersey Self, statewide Self-Advocacy Network, NJSSAN. So I'm going to share some information about the current services and supports offered by us, the project. Um, but, you know, we all do a lot. Uh, the job titles are reflected here, uh, but we certainly provide a variety of different services and supports. So, for example, if you are looking to start a self-advocacy group, at your agency or school or program, we can help with that. Um, if you need support working with an existing group, we can definitely support you in doing that. We're here for that. All of our media, all of the media and resources produced by the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project are meant to be accessible and educational. The information and referral services that are provided are prompt, comprehensive, and most importantly, tailored to the needs of the person looking for that information. So we're really proud of that. And we're gonna get a little bit deeper into some of the services and supports of the project in just a bit. But to provide a little bit more context, I wanted to explain the relationship between the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project and the ARC of New Jersey. So the ARC is a national organization. Um, some of you on the call today actually work for or receive supports from local chapters of the ARC. There is a chapter of the ARC in every county in New Jersey. Um, so there are 20 local county chapters because Bergen and Passaic County share one chapter. Um, 
And the ARC of New Jersey is essentially the statewide organization of the ARC here in New Jersey. And then the local chapters in each county provide direct services. But we are the advocacy organization. So there are several different programs of the ARC of New Jersey, including, of course, the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project. There's a criminal justice advocacy project, a program that focuses on mainstreaming medical care, as well as Project Hire, which is the support and employment program of the ARC of New Jersey. Some of you may have listened to a webinar just a couple weeks ago hosted by Adam Kugler, who's the director of Project Hire. If you missed out on that, that webinar was recorded and archived on the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project website. So you can give that a listen at your convenience. If you wanna learn more about any of the programs detailed here, you can just click here. This is a live link. But all this information can also be found on the ARC of New Jersey's homepage. So Frankie, our wonderful media and communications coordinator created this graphic several months ago now. And it was really meant to highlight the transition from in-person uh, programming and trainings and meetings to virtual programming. This happened in light of the day program closures um, back in March. So this graphic really was meant to illustrate the newly created virtual programming and an emphasis on all of the things that we have to offer virtually right now. Um, so we, our goal was to always remain connected with self-advocates, staff, and family members during this challenging time. And we wanted to just let everybody know we're still here. We are still providing that excellent support and educational opportunities through our trainings, webinar, and Zoom, as well as on social media. So, um, yeah, we actually just updated this graphic to reflect some of our more recent additions to our virtual programming. So let's check this out. Again, created by Frankie, such a creative uh, whiz. We're so delighted to have her on the team. This is a weekly planner. Um, since we are still supporting self-advocacy in a huge way, we're just doing it 100% virtually for the time being. So this kind of breaks down the different offerings that the project hosts every day of the week. We work with a certified nutritionist and fitness trainer on Mondays. So you can check out our social media accounts on Mondays. That's including Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. You can't miss it. Veronica from Vero Pure Green is going to produce a video every week to teach you about a new aspect of health and wellness. And of course, on Tuesdays, here we are, the Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. This is continuing through next year, every Tuesday at two o'clock. Moving on to Wednesdays, we have our interactive Healthy Lifestyles Project live on Zoom every Wednesday at 11 a.m. And we also work with a fantastic group of fitness trainers through the in-home training, IHT. They create a new video every week. It's meant to be accessible, adaptable, and fit for everybody to stay healthy and active while we're at home. On Thursdays, Erin and Frankie are the hostesses with the mostesses on our brain games. That is now hosted on Zoom at 1 p.m. There's no need to pre-register. You can find the link um, through the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project emails that go out about brain games. If you would like that information, just submit your email in the questions box now. We'll make sure you get that. Again, it's a free, fun, and really engaging way to um, connect with other advocates, family members, staff. And then of course on Friday, Erin uh, posts a new healthy recipe. So it's a really comprehensive, um, easy to follow video for creating a healthy meal or snack. And she changes it up every week, it's something new. And also we are live on Zoom with members of the in-home training team at one o'clock every Friday. So it's a nice way to kind of round out the week and uh, start your weekend on a really healthy, active note. So this is our to-do list here. If you haven't already, sign up for the NJSAP email list. That's the quickest, easiest way to um, stay connected with all of the stuff we have going on. Because in addition to these daily activities, we're still offering trainings for groups and schools and agencies. We're still hosting events. We're still doing a lot of stuff. So 
being part of our email list is just the quickest way to get that information. Um, yeah, so this is great. This is a handout. So if you go over to the go to webinar control panel, you will see this NJSAP Weekly Planner as part of the handout. So this is a resource you can download, you can share, you can print. Um, we really want you to spread this around because this is just a quick, easy way to reference all of the virtual programming currently happening, including our New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network Council meetings. And we're going to dig into that a little bit deeper in just a bit. So moving on, prior to COVID, we, the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project team, traveled extensively uh, statewide every day to deliver free, comprehensive, accessible, and interactive trainings to students and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, we were on the road, we were delivering trainings to at schools, at day programs, at employment programs, basically any place that an, a student or adult with a disability would be spending their time during the day, we would go there, we would train, and we would do different events. Um, so I just want to make it really clear, our training program is 100% up and running. It is virtual now. That's the only difference. It's still free, it's still accessible, it's still meant to be interactive and engaging. It's just based online for the time being. But this is basically a flyer that highlights some of our workshops and offerings. But I also want to check out um, a video of how to request trainings for your school or agency through our website. Again, these trainings are hosted by project team members and are intentionally interactive. We can customize trainings based on the interests and needs of the folks that you as a staff member support. And we are always open to creating new trainings based on need and based on topics that might not be covered in other trainings. So let's check out that video now. So here we are on the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project homepage. The first item on our news and updates section is our training page where you can request a training for your group, agency, or school. So this is just a little bit about our team and what we have to offer. Um, just keep in mind right now we're offering 100% virtual training. So we're not visiting programs in person for the time being, but we are available to host virtual trainings through Zoom, go to webinar, Google Meet, basically any virtual meeting platform that you would want to use, we can accommodate that. So our training topics are detailed here under these headers and the training request form allows you to pick and choose which topics you would be interested in having us train on. So we just need some basic information, your email address, your name, the agency, organization, or school that you work for, as well as an estimate of how many people would be participating. And just keep in mind that these trainings are specifically designed to be accessible and are really geared towards students and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We also want to know where in the state you're located, just based on your county. And here's where we get into picking and choosing the topics that you are interested in having us train on. So you can you know, pick and choose any number of topics from these different headers. These are our self-advocacy related trainings. And then if we move down here, we have legislative advocacy topics like voting, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act, as well as employment trainings. We also offer technology trainings including uh, guided videos and how to kind of tutorials on using different aspects of technology. And then there is a communication and relationships topic. So if you're not interested in a particular kind of subset, you can just say I'm not interested in this. Or again, you can pick and choose the topics that you think would be of interest to the groups that you support. Finally, our healthy living trainings are detailed here. That includes outdoor safety, illness prevention, hygiene. Um, we've also developed trainings on COVID, COVID-19. So preventing um, 
folks from getting COVID by using different hygiene techniques, wearing masks appropriately. And we also offer guided activities. So they are detailed here. Um, you can, there is the option to send a copy of your response to yourself, just so you keep track of the trainings that you requested. But basically once you hit submit, a member of our team kind of takes over and will get in contact with you. So it's as easy as that, just filling out this form and then waiting for us to get in contact to set some dates. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful to you to kind of get an idea about how easy it is to request free trainings for self-advocates, students and adults with disabilities. Um, and again, this is statewide. It's not limited to a certain county and there is no cost to agencies and programs that are providing support to people with disabilities. So this was actually um, our effort to kind of streamline that process. We want to make it as easy as possible for staff who already have so much on their plates to request trainings and activities. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, of course, you can put those in the questions box now, or um, you can email me or another member of the team, or hey, visit the New Jersey Self-Advocacy website to make that request. So as you probably know, the Stay Healthy at Home webinar series is a weekly series. It was launched in April, 2020, again, as um, an effort on the part of the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project to stay connected. We were really concerned, of course, when um, COVID-19 forced day programs, day hab programs, employment programs for people with disabilities to close. We wanted to make sure that we can stay connected and continue providing education and resources to self-advocates, group advisors, staff, and family members. So again, we're so grateful for your support of this program. Um, registration links are here. This is a live link. But also, if you're signed up for the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project email list, you'll get a weekly email with the new topics that are coming up. As always, if you have a topic that you'd like to see us cover, you can suggest that in the questions box now or submit that at the end of this webinar in the survey. Okay, so we are going to check out another video um, and we're going to jump into that right now. New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project homepage. So let's take a look again at the news and updates section. And we're going to check out the Stay Healthy at Home website. So just click here for where it says registration and archive webinars can be found here. This will open up our Stay Healthy at Home webinar series site. So if you scroll down past the Stay Healthy at Home icon, you will see um, the registration links for upcoming webinars. So you are listening to Still More to Come right now. And in just a couple of days, a recording of this webinar will be posted here where we archive our webinars. So again, if you want to register for upcoming webinars, you just click this link. It will open up a, it will, uh, open up a new website where you can register for the upcoming webinar and learn about the presenters who will be leading this session. So here we are for the registration for upcoming webinars. And if we scroll down, these are where we archive or keep and kind of store all of the webinars that have been presented in the past. So this was our very first Stay Healthy at Home session. If you click here, it will again open up another tab and you'll see a description of the webinar as well as a link to view a recording of the session. So this will bring you to our YouTube channel where you can watch, uh, listen to the full recording. And if we just go back, again, this link will open up. We can watch the video or we can also have the option of downloading a copy of the slides that were presented. So we do this for all of the Stay Healthy at Home webinars. So since the series started in April, we've recorded each one and they are all stored here. So it, again, it's free, it's open to anybody and we really suggest that you check out the different topics. If there's a particular topic that you weren't able to attend live in real time, you can check it out here. 
So there we go. Um, we just wanted to make it really clear that the webinars are accessible, they're there for your viewing pleasure and at your convenience. If you can't check it, uh, check it out live on a Tuesday at two o'clock, you can always visit the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project website to do that. So I want to move on and discuss another component of our work, of the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project's work in supporting the New Jersey Statewide Self Advocacy Network. So as leaders in self advocacy, NJSSAN members regularly meet with decision makers and members of the legislature and policymakers to serve as a sounding board for potential laws and policies that would, if passed, affect the daily lives of people with disabilities. That is a that's a priority for self advocates. Essentially, you know, one of the tenets of the self advocacy movement is nothing about us without us. So if decisions are being made or discussions are being had about things that would affect people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, self advocates want to be at the table. So part of our effort to do that was to host uh, several different congressional recess meetings with different members of our federal government and our federal policymakers. So I'm going to get into who we met with back in August in just a bit. But essentially, the project's role in planning these meetings was to work with advocates to really hone in on the talking points or the most important discussion topics they wanted to bring up when they had the opportunity to speak with those representatives. So this particular meeting um, during the congressional recess, and congressional recess is when members of Congress, federal legislators, go home for the summer. They, you know, they get a short, uh, just a couple weeks to head back to their home states. They're not expected to be in Washington, D.C. at that time. So they spend more time with their constituents or the people that they represent here in New Jersey. So most of their work focuses, you know, they're in DC a lot, but during that congressional recess, they come back to their home states. So these were the talking points that were developed by self-advocates and delivered during those three congressional meetings with Congressman Pallone, who represents New Jersey District 6, and Senator Cory Booker and Senator Robert Menendez. So the talking points here, were discussed at each meeting with staff members for these representatives. And again, these talking points were developed by self-advocates based on feedback from self-advocates throughout the state. Um, we're going to jump into a discussion on the structure of the New Jersey statewide self-advocacy network in just a bit, but essentially leadership from each area of the network talked to self-advocates in their area and brought up the most important things they wanted to discuss. And that's what this agenda is. So it was really a team effort. It was really a group effort. And it represents different um, priorities and concerns of self-advocates, not just in one part of New Jersey, but statewide. So again, self-advocates were meeting with these three decision makers, uh, staff members for these three decision makers over the summer. and. Some of the folks pictured here were part of those meetings. Um, this is these couple of photos. We did our best to get everybody from the advisory board in the photos. Um, these are the elected representatives who are part of the advisory board of the statewide self advocacy network. So, like any other organization, like any other an advocacy organization, there is a board that makes decisions based on feedback from membership. So Evelyn Ramundo, who's pictured here, is the president of the advisory board of the Statewide Self-Advocacy Network. And other members are elected by self-advocates from their different council areas. So the network is kind of broken down into five different areas here. We have Council 1 in the Northwest, Council 2 in the Northeast, Council 3 in purple here, the Central ish coastal New Jersey. Council of four, it represents the southwestern part, portion of the state. And Council of five is the south. 
So again, we break down the state into geographic areas because sometimes the concerns shared by Council 1 members might not be shared by Council 4 members. So we want to make sure that each of the councils have the opportunity to develop their individual goals, but then of course the advisory board, the leaders of all these five councils come together on a regular basis to represent the concerns and priorities of each of their five regional areas. So when we also look at the responsibilities of advisory board members, um, certainly meetings with legislators, advocacy efforts, advocacy campaigns are a big part of their responsibilities, but the network also focuses on planning according to major events each year. So some of you may have attended one or both of these events. These are the Spring Into Action Luncheon and the Fall Conference. So the representatives here who are elected by their peers in their council areas are responsible for choosing the theme of each of these events, designing t-shirts that serve as the only fundraiser that they host each year, and to vote on the award winners for our Spring Into Action Luncheon, because this is an awards luncheon, as well as the topics and presenters for the fall conference. I should also note that this fall conference, the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network Fall Conference, is the largest professional development conference specifically for self-advocates and self-advocacy group advisors in the state. So um, this is no easy feat. This is a lot of work in addition to all of the legislative and policy meetings that folks are attending. Advisory board members are also expected to coordinate these events in conjunction with support from the project. Um, and if we look here at, again, a breakdown of the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network, we have our different council areas and that makes up the network. So this is a handout that's included in the GoToWebinar Go to control panel right now. It is the NJSAN Council Map and Contact Info PDF. So you can download that if you wanna keep that and store that for your own use or for sharing with someone that you think would be interested in attending a meeting. Um, I really wanna highlight kind of a cool feature of the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project website there are individual council pages. So again, the work that's being done up in council one is reflected on this website. And each of the five councils have their own website where they can track their goals and priorities, different events, um, and store their kind of calendar and agendas throughout the year. So that's kind of a neat feature that members can use or other folks can use to kind of learn about the network and the different councils. So I'd like to present now our first poll. So I'm gonna launch this poll. So based on your location, would you be a member, which council area would you be a member of? Okay, so it looks like council one and council four are evenly split. We've got 38% of respondents from each council and then 13% from council two and 13% from council three pretty well represented. Um, so yeah, basically, uh, you know, I did this just out of curiosity who was on the, the webinar today, but um, you know, this is intentional. We broke down the state into these different council areas because prior to March of this year, we were meeting in person every single month. So um, we wanna make sure the burden of travel is kind of shared between all of the members um, you know, that someone from Council 5 isn't expected to drive all the way up to Somerset County every month. It's a local regional meeting. So again, thank you for participating. And I would also like to jump into um, another quick video to basically discuss um, the making sure that the goals of each council are represented. So again, what's a priority in Bergen County might be less relevant for the members living in Cape May County. But one shared goal is ensuring that funding for supports and services for people with disabilities is always represented and included in the state budget. So let's check out um, a quick video for that. Check out 
the quickest, easiest way to find out about the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network. From the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project homepage, scroll down until you see this orange box on the left side of your screen and just click on this link right here, NJSSAN and Advisory Board. So this is the website dedicated to the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network, NJSSAN. Uh, this section talks a little bit about the mission and vision, as well as different events hosted by the network throughout the year. Um, right now, all of the council meetings are happening virtually. So there are five regional councils that make up the statewide self-advocacy network. This is kind of visual representation of the network. So um, council one is up here. Here's council two, council three in purple, council four in blue, and Council 5 in green. And each council has a website dedicated to uh, the different activities and meetings that take place each month. So if we start here, Council 1, it of course breaks down the regional area that makes up Council 1. And if we scroll down just a bit, we can find an invite as well as a calendar. So this will automatically download a calendar of events for next year. These are all the meetings that are happening, all the Council 1 meetings that will happen in 2021. So we include the time as well as contact information for the advisor for that particular council. I happen to advise Council 1, so there's my information if you have questions about the meeting or just about the council in general. So if we go back, um, each council homepage also has a recent events section that highlights the agenda or talking points from the last meeting. So this is council one. If we pop back over here, let's see, we can go to council two. Let's check out council three here. So again, same setup, invite and calendar for next year as well as uh, a quick write up about the last meeting that took place. And again, all meetings are happening virtually. These meetings are free and open to any person with an intellectual or developmental disability who wants to learn more about self-advocacy. They're great ways to meet other advocates, to build a variety of skills, um, and they're just super fun. So if we check on this side, this details the advisory board's priorities for this fiscal year. So um, this information is there just to highlight some of the priorities that are shared across the statewide self-advocacy network, though each of the five councils do have their own set of goals that they work on based on what is important to the members of these groups. Okay, so I hope that sheds a little bit more light on the structure of the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network, as well as the role of the advisory board, which is really to advise how the network proceeds and responds to different advocacy issues and items that could concern um, or, or impact the daily lives of people with disabilities. Again, a huge shared goal is ensuring that funding for supports and services for people with disabilities is always represented in the state budget. Um, let's check out how that happens. So another responsibility of members of the advisory board, as well as members of the New Jersey Statewide Self-Advocacy Network, is participating in legislative um, hearings. So every year, the New Jersey State budget hearings happen. This is actually a photo from the last and only in-person budget hearing from this past March. So Aaron Smithers supported a member of the advisory board, Renee Pierce, um, who is chairwoman of council two. And Renee gathered comments and feedback from her fellow council two members, as well as the priorities of the board and wrote those down into a testimony and delivered that to members of the legislature pictured here at a public hearing. So again, a public hearing is just what it sounds like. The legislators are here to hear members of the public out. They wanna to listen to what our recommendations are for that state budget. So if we scroll to the next photo here, this is another picture from a budget hearing. 
Um, Evelyn Ramundo, president of the network, is supported by Erin as she delivers her testimony. You can't see the members of the legislature here, but they are sitting there listening. And it's very democratic. Every person who testifies gets exactly the same amount of time. They use a stop, a little stoplight here to let you know when you're running out of time, when your time is up. So and this is advocacy at work. This is self-advocate speaking directly to the people whose job it is to make decisions about the state budget. There's never any guarantee. Supports and services need funding. And each year, self-advocates need to approach members of their legislature to make sure they know what things are needed in the community. So it's an amazing thing to watch. It's an amazing thing to be a part of. And again, our role as members of the project is to support the work of self-advocates. So if folks need assistance transcribing their thoughts into a testimony, we help with that. We also help to pull out talking points because members of the legislature receive your written testimony. They don't want you to read from that because they've already read it. So they want you to create talking points that you can deliver in a really, again, quick way, less than three minutes. And they can also consider your testimony as well, which can be longer. So here's another photo from a state budget, budget hearing. This was towards the end of the hearing. So as you see, a lot of members of the audience had left. They had already testified. And Anita Clavering, who's a member of Council 3, is pictured here delivering her testimony on the state budget. So again, the state budget is decided on by members of the legislature in New Jersey, the assembly, as well as the Senate. And the, the governors expected to sign off on it. So it's really a group effort. And those folks look to advocates to let them know what we need. So it's a super, super critical part of the advocacy process every year. And in speaking a little bit on policy advocacy and government relations, the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project works with individual self-advocates to teach about those processes, but we also provide training to staff. So the idea here is that we know that direct support professionals work to support self-advocates in every aspect of life. Um, we know that self-advocates have a right and responsibility to participate in the legislative process. So our team is available to deliver trainings on effective legislative and policy advocacy free of charge to any agency supporting people with disabilities in New Jersey. These pictures are examples of the train the trainer model. So each of the staff members in this photo are working on a daily basis with people with disabilities. So the information they gathered about how the legislative process works in New Jersey the idea is that they take that knowledge and then use that to educate the self-advocates they support. So you teach one person and that person will hopefully teach a hundred other people and help them connect with opportunities to testify and be part of that process. Um, and so again, if you're not quite sure where to start, uh, just put your email in the questions box. We will be in touch. Or of course, you can visit the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project website and request that legislative advocacy training. We're still doing that. It's still very much um, needed. It's important that people be able to use their voices in a way that's effective. And um, we wanna be part of that. Okay, so we're switching gears just a little bit. I wanna focus on the Healthy Lifestyles Project. So we talked about a couple of the different activities that we're hosting, the Healthy Lifestyles Project activities we're hosting each week. But I also want to dig a little bit deeper and talk about um, how you can get involved in those activities. So our Healthy Lifestyles Project, uh, we're so excited to announce that it was uh, granted funding again for next year. So it will continue through 2021, yay. Horizon Foundation for New Jersey elected to grant that funding once again. So we so appreciate that. And we're really excited to continue delivering Healthy Lifestyles Project trainings, events, and activities virtually until it is safe to return to in-person events. So this is a new activity, our Healthy Lifestyles Project, um, or new-ish. It's a couple months old. We launched it as part of our weekly virtual repertoire. Prior to COVID, we were again hosting 
Healthy Lifestyles Project events throughout the state in person. So there were community-based health and fitness events. We've now transitioned to virtual. So um, I really have to know, has anyone on this webinar today participated in a Healthy Lifestyles Project training event? So if you've attended Healthy Lifestyles Project live on Wednesdays or Fridays, let us know. Have you gone to an in-person event? Did you join us for a hike or for another HLP activity? Yes, no, we're not sure. So that's awesome. The majority of you guys have participated. 64% have participated in an HLP event. 36% have not yet done so. So let me share some information that'll hopefully pique your interest and get you involved. So what is the Healthy Lifestyles Project? Essentially, it is a program dedicated to teaching adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities about all aspects of health and wellness. So we're not just focusing on diet. We're not just focusing on social connection. We're, we're focusing on everything that makes up a full and healthy and active life for everybody. So it is funded through the Horizon Foundation for New Jersey and it is coordinated by the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project, which again is a program of the ARC of New Jersey. So we're super excited to have the opportunity to incorporate this kind of curriculum into our trainings because advocacy is critical, but we also know that people need to be able to have their basic needs met and feel healthy and safe and confident in their lives in order to be as effective advocates as they can be. So. This is the direct link to learn about the Healthy Lifestyles Project. And again, it's designed for adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Right now, it's 100% virtual, of course. But in the past, let's take a little trip down memory lane here. Um, in the past, we've done in-person cooking classes. So this is hosted by a chef with Classic Time in Westfield. It was fantastic. Everything was handmade advocates were taught not only um, how to prep the food, but how, how to prep it in a way that's hygienic and safe and healthy. So it was hands-on, it was fantastic. And again, we rely on input from self-advocates to figure out what kind of events do we wanna host? And a lot of advocates said, I wanna learn how to cook for myself. I wanna be more active in the kitchen and know what's going on to my plate and what I'm gonna eat. So that was a response to that. This was a annual event that became a biannual event, um, pre-COVID of course. It was hosted at Wachung Reservation in Union County. And it was hosted in actually a, a restored barn. So here pictured on the left is Mag, a trainer who is leading self-advocates through a really intense workout. So part of the event was activity, you know, doing fitness activities, learning how to be active. And then we've also hosted different events that focus on um, fit creativity and kind of working with music therapists here to be creative and to express yourself as that way. And then of course, not pictured, we have a very healthy breakfast spread. And in the afternoon, it's a catered healthy lunch. So this was a super popular event that grew very quickly and we're so excited to get back to this. So stay tuned. Another part of our Healthy Lifestyles Project is coordinating opportunities for people with disabilities to get out in their community and do free or low cost health events. So this is a hike that we went on as a group. It's free, it doesn't cost anything. And throughout the course of the hike, the project staff and other direct support professionals are reinforcing health and safety tips so we're talking about proper trail etiquette. We're talking about why it's important to stay hydrated while you're, while you're hiking, regardless of what the weather is like. We're talking about um, you know, different ways to stay safe and active throughout your whole life and still be an active participant in your community. So super fun, it's beautiful, it's great to do as a group. And it's also great to look back and remind folks, like you climbed a mountain today, this is something that you can do anytime that you want. You've done it before, you can do it again. And that's really part of the message of Healthy Lifestyles Project. 
Of course, equine therapy is part of the project as well. This was, again, in response to requests from self-advocates. So we worked with um, a couple different equine therapy organizations, uh, one of which just hosted a barn tour last month as part of our Healthy Lifestyles Project Live on Zoom. So there's major benefits to equine therapy. Um, it's fun, you're learning new skills, maybe you're even conquering a fear of larger animals, um, but it's great to see. And it, again, it's a, a regular part of the project. Speaking of creativity and trying new things, this was a, this is a photo from a glass blowing class that self advocates from the Ark of Essex County participated in. So this was something that was super hands on. Um, essentially the self advocates were asked to choose a piece that they wanted to recreate. They had creative control over the color of the piece, the shape of it, how big or how small it would be. Um, and again, a visual representation of you tried something new, you got creative, you might have been a little scared because it is hot in there, um, but it's that's something we incorporated into the Healthy Lifestyles Project, again, as part of realizing that people's whole life and whole, um, whole life should be about health and wellness, not just one piece like focusing on diet or exercise. And of course, our weekly hiking series at the Wachung Reservation. Um, this was a way to track, we, we kept track of how many steps we took on each hike and how much we walked in total. So again, a great way to track fitness and to reach those fitness goals as a group. So I wanna just revisit and kind of break down the weekly schedule of events for our Healthy Lifestyles Project. Veronica from Vero Pure Green is uh, our star on Mondays for our social media videos. Veronica creates unique uh, creative videos about incorporating aspects of health and wellness into our everyday lives. So maybe it's making a different kind of salad for dinner or switching up our lunch and eating something that has a little bit more antioxidants in it. Um, she also leads us through different stretching techniques and she is a certified nutritionist and uh, fitness consultant. So check our social media out on Mondays for Veronica's videos. And our Stay Healthy at Home series, again, every Tuesday from two to three, you're here, you're in the know. And if you can't ever, you know, if you can't catch a webinar live, we do archive them. And the topics range. We're not just focused on one aspect of advocacy work or health and wellness. We're really trying to make sure we're covering all our bases. And we want to hear from you. What topics do you want to learn about? We would love to incorporate them into a future Stay Healthy at Home webinar series. And here is this little sampling of videos from the IHT in-home training team. So we have Kristen, who is a Pilates and yoga teacher, and then Matt, who is the founder of in-home training. Matt, is, Matt and his team are incredibly skilled at making sure that every person is comfortable with the activity that's happening. So they are mindful of different um, accommodations that can be made if someone uses a certain um, device for mobility, and they're really great about adapting their, their exercises to suit anybody. So it's fantastic. They produce videos every Wednesday that are added to the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project's social media accounts. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Healthy Lifestyles Project Live, of course, is happening on Wednesdays and Fridays. We just added dates for Fridays going forward. People wanted more activities, so we are responding to that. So yes, we respond, we listen. I promise we wanna hear from you. And um, Healthy Lifestyles Project Live is now Wednesdays and Friday afternoon. Okay, so this is also a screen grab of a Healthy Lifestyles Project Live session led by Veronica. So Veronica led self-advocates through step-by-step -step process of making a winter chocolate and oat smoothie sounds delicious um, and she also focuses on not just creating the smoothie itself but the benefits of different ingredients that are going into the smoothie 
And she also does an amazing job of suggesting substitutes. For example, if someone doesn't like um, dairy milk, okay, you can use coconut milk or any other type of non-dairy milk. And she'll talk about the different um, aspects of that. So it's super fun, it's interactive. And again, every Wednesday and Friday. So there are lots of opportunities to join in. And a super fun event that we've recreated a couple times now is a virtual zoo tour of the Cape May County Zoo. So uh, educators from Cape May County Zoo attend our Healthy Lifestyles Project live sessions and teach us about different animals, some of which you may have never heard of before. So it's extra exciting. Um, and again, this is a fun, interactive way to learn as well as to meet other self-advocates, other staff and family members that are part of the series as well. Laughter yoga was a suggestion made by one of the self-advocates who's a very um, frequent contributor to our Healthy Lifestyles Project live sessions. And Noreen Brahman with Laughter Yoga led us through a laughter yoga session and talked about all the different benefits of laughter and how that can help you with your overall mood. Um, and it's especially a great skill to have now when we're trying to manage our stress, maybe when we're spending a little bit more, a little bit more time at home. Um, so you can check this out. Um, we are doing Healthy Lifestyles Project Live again twice a week. So there are ample opportunities to get involved. And if you have any Healthy Lifestyles Project Live topics or events that you'd be interested in having us host. Again, we love those suggestions. Feel free to plug those in the questions box. Looking at our in-home training exercises, I just want to give a visual representation of some of the stuff that Matt is leading us through. We're not just doing push-ups for an hour. He is working our whole body. He's making sure that we're stretching before any exercise happens and talking about, again, the importance of the pre-exercise prep work we need to do to keep our bodies healthy and safe and injury-free. Another still from a yoga and Pilates session led by Kristen with in-home training. And it's so fun to just see everybody participating together, challenging themselves, and coming back every week to do that. Uh, you don't need a gym membership to stay healthy and stay fit. You can do all this stuff with very minimal equipment or props at home. And this was our virtual barn tour with Mainstream, the equine therapy program. So it was super fun, super interactive. And again, as the name would suggest, Healthy Lifestyles Project Live is live. We're on camera. We want to hear from folks. There are opportunities to ask questions or share feedback and information. So that, again, is trying to be responsive to what we've heard from self-advocates. People want to be involved. They want to feel like they're interacting with people, even though we might be spending more time at home. So this is a great venue to do that. Of course, I mentioned before, Aaron and Frankie host Brain Games every Thursday on Zoom, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Um, this is a super fun activity to do. There's a different game pretty much every week. so. If one game isn't piquing your interest, maybe the next week will. Super fun, I urge you to check it out. And there's no registration required, just join. We're also going to look at some of our quick tips that are created a couple of times a week on the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project social media pages. Again, we know some people prefer Facebook, some prefer Instagram, other people like YouTube. We're trying to keep all our bases covered and make sure no matter where you check us out, you're gonna find new content and things to do every day that can help you stay healthier. So there are quick tips about hydration. Again, just trying to develop a more positive outlook as well as general skincare and sleep routines. We also, we being the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project, have curated playlists that we've, we uh, share every few months. So we just released a holiday playlist on our YouTube channel. Feel free to check that out. And Erin makes beautiful videos about a lot of different aspects of health and wellness, including sustainability um, and little DIY homemade um, self-care tips as well. 
So this is a snapshot of the New Jersey Self Advocacy Project's YouTube channel. Again, we have a whole host of videos that are free and available to you to, available to you to watch at your leisure. Our trainings are included on there. They're typically abridged versions of our full trainings, but it'll give you an idea of the topics and the different talking points that we incorporate into those trainings. So you can check that out before you request a training on the website. We also, again, archive the Stay Healthy at Home webinars on the YouTube channel. We have a, uh, 45 plus videos of yoga and meditation, several different technology tutorials, and again, of course, our dance party playlists and different themed playlists are available. We know that certain programs are hosting their own uh, dance parties on Fridays or over the weekends, so we invite you to check those out and incorporate those into any dance party you might host. So this is a live link to sign up for Positive Pulse, which is a bi-monthly newsletter that's sent out by the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project. As the tagline suggests, it is your monthly dose of advice on healthy living. So if you're interested, you can plug in your information right here and you'll receive our next issue. There's one coming out uh, later today. And again, everything is available on our YouTube channel, our Instagram account, Facebook and Twitter accounts. So we are well connected and we hope that you'll think about liking and subscribing and following us on these different um, accounts to stay aware of everything that we have going on because it's a lot. And I also urge you to check out the handout section. There is a copy of the Healthy Lifestyles Project Workbook as well as the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project Weekly Planner here and our one-page brochure along with the council map and contact info. So again, I'm just gonna plug our weekly planner here while I check and see if there are any questions or comments in our questions box. Okay. Oh, great question. Well, William asked, how does an individual self-advocate get legislative advocacy training? I can see on the website about group requests. William, I'm glad that you asked that. So we have already created and presented a couple different webinars as part of the Stay Healthy at Home series on legislative advocacy. But if you are interested in um, learning a little bit more about that process, I would urge you to check out the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project website we have a governmental affairs ambassador program. That's kind of the legislative advocacy program to teach self-advocates about legislative advocacy and how to get involved. So our workbook is on the website, but also I think that maybe we can revisit the topic of legislative advocacy for self-advocates um, in the future. So thank you for that. Okay, and let's see. Okay, great. And thank you so much for sharing your contact information, William. We'll definitely make sure you are added to the to our email list. Okay. Oh, thank you so much, Jane. I'm so happy this was helpful to you. And yeah, we're really trying to be responsive to the network. If you have a topic you want us to present on, please don't be shy about suggesting that. As soon as this webinar ends, a survey is going to pop up. Two questions we want to know, was this uh, a good webinar for you? And what topics do you want us to cover in the future? So we are open to su suggestions and we are just at 301 right now. So, you know, I'm not seeing any other questions. Oh, awesome, William. I'm so happy you enjoy Brain Games. That is great. Thank you all so much for participating today. Um, I just want to, you know, let you all know that we appreciate it and we hope that you continue to stay involved with the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project and Statewide Self-Advocacy Network going into the new year. All right. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a wonderful afternoon.